I should probably look into doing that sometime soon, maybe. Oops. Face reveal. So if you guys click down below, you can find a link to my Patreon. <laughs> I'm joking. Here it is. Okay, so the first question is, is your name really Hilbert? Yes, my name is really Hilbert. It's an easy one, nice and straightforward. It's history with Hilbert because it's, it's history with me and I'm Hilbert, so nice and easy. Next question, are you Dutch slash are you English? Well, this is an interesting one because I kind of go with both. So my parents are both Dutch uh, and they came over to the United Kingdom before I was born. And I was actually born here in the United Kingdom in England in the Southwest in a place called Bath. Uh, but I was obviously raised bilingual, so speaking Dutch and English at home. Uh, and I have Dutch nationality and obviously I have a lot of friends over in the Netherlands and a lot of relatives and I visit there quite a lot. So I'd say I'm probably a bit of both, as you can imagine, both Dutch and English there. So that's kind of my, my backstory between whether I'm Dutch or English. I'd say it's a bit of both. Uh, you can make up your own mind if you want to. Uh, I think I fall into both camps. Which languages do you speak, which often follows on from this? So as a child, my first language I was raised in was Dutch, although I grew up in, obviously, in England. Uh, I also obviously then learned English when I started going to school and things and obviously I speak English and Dutch now as a first language although my spelling in Dutch is a bit poorer than in English and some of the grammar and stuff because obviously I was uh, brought up around English kids a lot of the time. So then I also have sort of a, let's say a beginner's knowledge in Frisian. My dad is fluent in Frisian uh, and wanted to grow us, uh, grow us up in Frisian, that's just, uh, he wanted to raise us with Frisian as well but obviously growing up in England we were already learning, as uh, my brother and I am speaking for. Uh, we were obviously already learning English and Dutch and then adding in Frisian would be a bit much but I'm obviously very interested in the kind of uh, the whole Frisian identity and the Frisian language and the, the Frisian history because it is such an interesting part of our past and um, that I'm personally picking it up a bit myself. So what other languages do I speak? Well at A level uh, I did Spanish so I'm fairly confident in Spanish now I'd say I can pick up quite a lot of it and learn most of the grammar and uh, a lot of the words and things I enjoy Spanish. Uh, I did French for a number of years but I've let that trail a bit so I can still uh, understand and have the very poorly held conversation in French these days. Um, thanks to my Dutch obviously I can understand anywhere from about 40 to 60 percent of German uh, most of the time uh, spoken and reading in some dialects are a lot easier than others. Now recently I've started learning Irish as well, uh, which I'm notoriously bad at, as I'm reminded on on this channel. Um, and also with languages like Afrikaans, and depending on whether you call Flemish a known language, obviously I can get most of that because it's so similar to Dutch um, at this point. So that's that's really the languages that I know most of, and obviously with the other Germanic languages I can get words here and there, and with Italian it's like Spanish but just more flowery and stuff, so you can kind of get bits of it. But I'd say those were the, the languages that I, that I speak, um, with any confidence at least. Um, now, okay, what's the next one? What sparks your interest in history? Well, um, I guess what sparked my interest in history would be I used to do a lot of drawing when I was younger, when I was a small child, I'd come home from school and I'd draw. And it was mostly Native Americans at that point, that was sort of my first interest in history. And I guess it was because I liked drawing and I liked violence. <laughs> I wasn't a particularly violent child, I just liked battles and things like that. Um, so I had a pirate phase and a Native American phase and a knight phase and then the Viking phase came and arguably I'm still in the Viking phase to be honest. Um, now I just used my computer to make the little cre uh, little figures in my uh, videos and stuff. But I think it was that. It was sort of the past is incredibly colorful um, and I liked sort of drawing that and, and bring it back and I blame my dad in large part as well because uh, we, we used to live in the southwest so where I was born in Bath and Somerset you have a lot of mounds and things and he'd, he'd tell us the story of uh, Beowulf and then he'd say oh Beowulf he's buried in that mound and it's just those kind of stories they stay with you as you grow older and you kind of learn more and more about it and as well I guess if you if you are an immigrant like especially with a, a Dutch background 
and you come over and then Northumberland as well is the perfect place because there's words in the Northumbrian dialect like for kids you call them bands um, which is obviously a lot more like the Frisian ban which is also uh, for children and you just sort of see these similarities between languages and you start to wonder well why are there so many things in Dutch and English that are similar and what changed and how did they grow apart and things of that sort of the, the evolution of language um, and then you get to obviously the period of, of the Vikings of um, the Frisians, the anglo saxons and that kind of thing which is really what I talk about in a lot of my videos um, so I'd say that's that's kind of um, how I got into history I, I think there's a, a few different ways and you just kind of you know get more and more into it you get more and more drawn into it and then you start reading and see my parents were a big factor they bought me books and took me to uh, all sorts of castles and historic houses and things and it just kind of grows from there really why did you start your channel all right, so there's a few reasons here. One of the reasons uh, I'll mention last, <laughs> and the other reasons I'll say is that, well, I've always been interested in history, as I've just explained, it's been a big thing for me growing up. Um, I did have a sort of other channel beforehand, uh, which I've taken down now because it was absolutely awful. So I kind of already had the stuff I needed to um, make videos. And I think it was something I always had in mind that I would start up another channel and, and talk about history because it's something that I'm interested in. My friends were always complaining that I was talking about history too much. And I thought, well, out there in the big wide world, there must be people who actually want to listen to me talk about history. And apparently there are, um, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so I say that was that was definitely one of the reasons. My first video was actually a response to Lindy Beige who was criticizing The Last Kingdom in some ways which is still an awesome and hilarious video um, if you want to watch that I mean Lindy Beige is not mine I'm not tooting my own horn um, and another reason that I started my channel is that I wanted to apply to Cambridge the University of Cambridge to study Anglo-Saxon Norse and Celtic um, which is uh, if you don't know Cambridge is, is a fairly decent university to get into um, so you have to have kind of things going on in your life that makes you worthy of studying there. So I thought, well, that's an extracurricular kind of thing to show that I'm not just, yes, I love history, please <laughs> give me a place. I mean, that's basically what I did, but that's one of the other reasons essentially is, is to say that I have something else going on that obviously I'm not just, you know, learning about history in school and doing stuff outside of school, uh, stuff like that. All right, so the next question leads on from that, which is what education do you have? Okay, so I went through the English schooling system. Uh, I did A-levels, my A-levels that I did. I did Dutch in the first year. Um, I did history, I did philosophy and ethics, and I did Spanish as well, uh, and also an EPQ, which is like a, basically it's like writing a mini dissertation on a, a topic of your choice, and then you're assessed on various things. Um, so that's my, my A-levels. Uh, I'm currently at university, so that leads on to the next question, which is how old are you? I'm 19, I turned 19, what's the date today? The 23rd, three days ago, uh, I turned 19. Um, and I have just started at the University of Cambridge so it did actually work, I did manage to get in. Uh, the course I'm doing is really awesome, it's called Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic. Um, and it, well, it's essentially what's in the name, you basically get to study the languages, the history, the literature of the Celtic peoples, the Anglo-Saxons and uh, you know the Vikings, the people from Scandinavia during this period. So that's what I'm studying um, and a lot of my recent videos, sort of the information I've got from that has been from my lectures and, and what I do there and the extra reading that you do. Um, for that course. I'll probably make a video about that at some point because I think many of you, especially if there are younger people watching, might be interested in looking into that uh, if you do enjoy my videos about that kind of period because it is a really interesting study um, to do, which is, you know, it's perfect for me, as you can probably tell from uh, my videos on this kind of stuff. All right, so what is your profession? Well, uh, as I've just started university, obviously um, Cambridge is very intense. Um, so. You get an essay every week, which is quite a lot to take in, uh, and you have to do a lot of reading for that. So you're not actually allowed to have a job because, well, you're not allowed to have one, and plus you really couldn't have a job. I guess I'm kind of cheating with my YouTube, but I don't really see that as a job. YouTube is what I do for fun. It's awesome that I can earn money with it as well. Um, but you know, it's I enjoy YouTube. I really enjoy doing that. Um, what I did before that, actually, I was a lifeguard for two years, uh, just at the local pool, um, which was a which was a fun job. Actually, I I did enjoy I did enjoy it. Um, but I I kind of still have the skills, but I, I'm not really going to go back to that. I think just because I'm, I'm too busy with university, I don't really have time to go back to that kind of thing. I'd say that's that's my only real other job that I had. Um, so what do you do outside of YouTube? 
well obviously now I'm very busy with uh, university stuff so um, it's gonna be interesting to see if I can keep uploading I'm gonna try and upload a video sort of once every two weeks while I'm uh, at university because I, I can't make any while I'm there it's just too busy um, but what I enjoy doing outside of, um, of YouTube well I have recently taken up kickboxing which is a lot of fun I enjoy getting to the gym so I have a few different gym buddies uh, big shout out to George and Callum up here in Northumberland and shout out to Hash and Joward down in Cambridge those are my, my gym buddies uh, there so I enjoy doing that I'm quite a physical person quite don't like doing that uh, also if you can not sure if you can if I dive out the way you can just make out my shield there um, and spear on the other side uh, I'm a historical reenactor as well I'm part of Regia Angelorum which is a Viking Age reenactment society so I really enjoy doing that um, obviously I enjoy reading uh, I have to do a lot of reading for uh, uni now as well uh, and it's where I get obviously the inspiration for my videos from um, that kind of thing. So that's that's really what I enjoy doing outside of uh, YouTube. I, I do a lot of things academically with uh, just having started university, and also with YouTube as well. So I like I like being a bit sporty, a bit active uh, in my in my other spare time that I have. Um, next question: Are you black? Yes, I'm black. What's your favorite historical period? Okay, so you can probably tell this is coming already, but I'd say sort of the migration era in Northern Europe and then the Viking Age. That's obviously what I'm studying. Um, I just find that period very interesting. There's just a lot of things going on. We don't know all too much about it, and there's new research coming up all the time as well. So it's just just makes it a very interesting period for me. Also, when a lot of the languages are kicking around, you have great social and economic change. Obviously, you have Christianity coming in. You have the Viking raids moving out. Uh, you have trade. Uh, you have the first you know the first nations start to be born in Northern Europe around this time. Uh, obviously, with England and Alfred and Athelstan, you have, but then also in Denmark and how that came around with Harold Bluetooth and. Gorm, and then later on in Sweden and, and what factors uh, sped this up and slowed this down and all. I just find it a very interesting period. Um, apart from that I'd say uh, what other periods do I find interesting? I, I quite like the 17th century with um, the Netherlands, the Dutch Republic. I find that all very interesting. How the Netherlands essentially went from being this this very marginal kind of um, the kind of the, the fishes on the edge of the Habsburgs to the most powerful nation on earth despite being tiny and having a tiny population is like it's not just because I'm Dutch I mean that does play a big part in it like for sure but um, I just find that that whole story incredibly interesting and um, so I like that as well um, yeah, also a bit of South African history, uh, quite like the, the Boers and how they sort of expanded outwards, uh, things like that. I find that all very interesting. And, and to be honest, there's bits and bobs throughout history that I find very interesting and I tend to make videos about them. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say that. Okay, so let's have a look. What's the next one? Which countries have you visited? Okay, so let's think. Well, obviously I was born in England, so that one doesn't really count. I've visited every country in the United Kingdom, so I've... Uh, have I? Tell a lie. I might have visited Wales when I wasn't born here. I'm not sure if that counts. I'd love to go to Wales, actually. I've got a lot of Welsh fans. Um, Borda. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to go to Wales, actually. My middle name is actually Welsh. It's Bryn, which means hill in Welsh. Fun fact. Um, so, yeah, I've been I've been Wales. I've definitely been in England. I've been in Scotland quite a few times. I've visited the, the Lowlands, the Highlands, some of the Isles as well. Uh, Mo, Kintyre, uh, that kind of place. So I've been there. I've been to Northern Ireland as well. Uh, I went for quite a short time. I've been in Belfast and went through Larn. And then actually the, the north coast of Northern Ireland is very nice. Uh, Antrim, uh, sort of that coastline. I've also passed into the Republic, into quite a few. I've been through, uh, went through Donegal and then drove down the west coast and then sort of cut inland, uh, cut eastwards towards, um, what is it, Carlo, County Carlo, and then up uh, through Durham, the Bruna Boyne. So I've been, it's sort of the British Isles, the uh, British and Irish Isles or whatever. Um, I've covered quite well. Obviously, I've been to the Netherlands, I've been through Belgium uh, and Luxembourg, I've been through Germany a couple times, I've visited France, uh, I went to Spain, to the northern mountains there, uh, I've been in Austria as well in Tyrol. Um, I've been to Denmark and briefly crossed, crossed into Sweden, but I haven't been to Norway yet, although I'd like to at some point, um, obviously. Uh, I've also been to Greece on holiday, that was really nice, to Kefalonia, which is one of the islands in the Aegean, I think, on that side. Um, I also visited America when I was 14 and went sort of uh, wilderness packing uh, through the, um, the west. 
sort of the the west coast and then further inland to like Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, that kind of area there. And I also this summer went to India, which was sort of probably the definitely the most exotic place I've ever been, uh, which is really awesome. And I'll probably make a, a vlog about that at some point, explaining my travels there. So that's that's where I've been uh, in the world. I'd, I'd like to visit more places now. Obviously going to Union, especially Cambridge, I've met people from all across the world. Um, so it'd be really awesome to see if I can try and visit them in their home countries at some point. What are your favourite historical YouTube channels? Um, now I, I watched, I tend to watch quite, I watched quite a lot of YouTube before starting and kind of got a lot of inspiration from various channels but I'm quite busy so I, I don't tend to watch lots of them but when I do watch history YouTube channels I enjoy them a lot. Um, someone who I've watched for a long time is Lindy Beige, really awesome channel. Uh, I used to watch a lot of Metatron and like Scholar Gladiatoria, Knights Errant, uh, that kind of stuff as well when I was quite into the armour and uh, weapons and stuff, don't know much about it though. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy those kind of things. Um, I also watched a bit of uh, Alternate History Hub, I quite like that style, um, you know, with the, with the music and the, uh, the kind of the scenarios and things like that. And there's, there's loads of great people I've met on YouTube now, which is really crazy that I know most of the people that I used to watch. Um, so I'd say, yeah, those are probably my favourite. Obviously, if you want a more in-depth kind of thing, sort of people like kings and generals are quite good. Uh, people who go into like really in-depth. Um, or if you're looking for something a bit more kind of in just the battle side of things, I quite like Baz Battles just to kind of chill out to. Um, is usually quite nice just to find out, you know, the intricacies of the actual battles in history. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that those are kind of the, the people that I, I watch and watch, but I don't have too much time for YouTube, unfortunately. Um, I know that makes me a bad YouTuber because you, you should always be watching, uh, you know, what your, your friends are doing on YouTube and what other people are doing and how you can improve, but it is what it is. Um, what's the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, that depends on if it's a European or an African swallow, and I hope you know the answer. Okay, so is prinsgezind or staatsgezind? I'll ask this question in Netherlands. Dan kunnen jullie allemaal commentaar op mijn Nederlands geven in de commentaar, commentaar, de comments, de comments, geen idee. Het klinkt zo Engels. Uh, kunnen jullie daar allemaal commentaar geven op mijn Nederlands en omdat een paar mensen vroegen of ik wat Nederlands kon praten in dit filmpje. Nou, dat kan dus. Uh, nou, prinsgezind of staatsgezind? Uh, ja, het is een moeilijke vraag. Ik hou wel van ze allebei en ik zie ook de nut in allebei. Uh, ik, ik vind staatsgezind partij wel, wel goed, want ik denk dat je altijd een beetje een balans in de macht moet hebben en ik denk dat dat ook wel goed was voor de, de vroege republiek, uh, hoe dat allemaal ging. Maar ik hou ook wel van het Koninklijk Huis en ik denk zeker dat uh, in tijd van de oorlog, dus uh, het rampjaar 1672, dat uh, het wel beter was dat de, de prinsgezinden aan de macht kwamen, want dan moet je ook echt één, uh, één figuur hebben die dan de leiding een beetje neemt, die dan uh, de, de strijd naar de vijand neemt. Dat ik kan zeggen in het Nederlands, geen idee. Um, dat is wel belangrijk, denk ik. Uh, het is wel jammer wat er met de broertjes de wit is gebeurd. Dat is wel een beetje zielig. Maar ja, ik denk dat uh, Willem toch even gewoon uh, harde actie nodig had. En dat heeft hij dus ook gedaan uh, in de tijd van de oorlog. Um, maar ja, ik denk dat er, er waren een beetje uh, figuren in de geschiedenis die uh, van staatsgezind en prinsgezind waren die allebei goed waren. Dus Michiel de Ruiter was uh, uh, sta staatsgezind, maar dan had je ook weer uh, andere figuren, dus Willem van Oranje en dan later ook weer uh, natuurlijk Willem de Derde en uh, dat soort dingen die, die allemaal wel belangrijk waren voor de, de prinsgezinde kant van het argument. Dus ja, ik denk eigenlijk allebei zijn best belangrijk. Um, dus ja, ik denk, ik denk als, je het, als je een beetje het midden van allebei zou kunnen zijn, dan, dan zou ik daar staan, denk ik. Oké, okay, uh, so, favorite non-historical YouTubers. Uh, good question. So, let me think. Favorite non-historical YouTubers. What non-historical YouTubers do you watch? Oké, okay, so... As I said, I don't really watch too much YouTube. I don't really have enough time to watch a lot of YouTube in my spare time. Um, but if I had to say non-historical, it usually is historical YouTubers that I watch. Uh, I, I I don't know. I watch quite a few of the lectures of Jordan Peterson. I find that stuff quite interesting. Other than that, I watch like language videos, I'd say. Um, so, for example, there's a, I think it's called Wiki Tongues. I sometimes put one of those on. It's just you know in, in like I don't know some some dialect from Europe or something. Uh, which is quite interesting, or Nahuatl, or you know, God knows what language they just have on there, and I watch that kind of thing. Um, other than that, I don't really watch loads. I, I guess but I eat quite a lot, and when I eat, I usually put on something on Netflix. So sometimes it's like, a, but then again, it's like a historical series that I'm watching, or sometimes it's like a crime series, like an international crime series. I watched quite a lot of Spanish stuff when I was in my levels. I used to watch um, a lot of like, I think it was called Bolsaciones. Uh, it's like this. Uh, 
this kind of um, this program, like this this detective series in Spanish um, and, and stuff like that, to help me with my languages. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say I don't really watch too much non-historical YouTube, as boring as that is, but that's just how it is. Um, okay, let's have a look. Uh, do you make videos about what you make them about? So really, I'm guessing what people are getting at here um, is that like. Why do you make videos about the topics that you do? So a lot of the time I make videos about stuff that I already know about, um, which is why it's sometimes hard when people ask me to put sources in the description of each one. It's like a lot of the time I do a lot of reading and I've always done a lot of reading. So a lot of the time I already have the knowledge, but I'm not particularly sure from where. I will usually check up on stuff um, just to make sure that it is up to date. But a lot of the time it's in, um, so I've read a lot of books on the Viking Age now, so I can just pull together and think, right, I want to make a video about, uh, let's say, the Vikings in England. Then most of the time I'll already have the knowledge there, if that makes sense, because I've read four, five, six books specifically about that topic um, in the last couple of years, and you can sort of bring that back. So a lot of the time the videos I make are about things that I find interesting, um, because it is a hobby and I do do this in my spare time, so I make videos about what I, <laughs> essentially what I want to make them about, what I find interesting. Um, um, and also about what I know about because otherwise, it, you know, I do make videos about things that I don't know too much about um, and then I do proper research into it to get books out of the library or uh, I obviously have quite a few books already, especially being at Cambridge now, I could, it has a lot of potential, I just don't have the time unfortunately. Um, also there's some good online sources as long as you check, obviously, um, you know, who's writing them, if there's anything behind it, uh, how reputable they are. Um, but usually, remember, you can look at citations and things and then just look up, you know, what, what, how is this treated in the academic world? Do other scholars agree with them? Do any of them recommend it? And you know, usually with about 10 minutes of research, you can figure out whether something online is pretty accurate. Just by looking at, does it match with other things um, that are being said? Does it seem a bit outlandish? Are there any scholars criticizing it? That kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I guess that's why I make videos about what I what I do. Uh, recently as well with university, what I recently did uh, was to actually, obviously I have to write an essay every week for my degree, um, but I was thinking, well, you know what, in my spare time, so I've, I've got six weeks off at the moment, uh, which is why I'm making more videos at the moment, um, as well as doing work, I can then use that and make a video about that, uh, which you guys might find interesting. Um, by basing it off the essay and then letting you guys read the essay and things with the link which I did with my Danish video if you're interested. So yeah that's that's why I make videos about what I make for bouts, what I'm interested in um, and also sort of uh, what I know about what I can make videos about because I can't just stop making up nonsense uh, as much as it may seem like I do but yeah that, that's essentially that. Okay, so do you play any historical video games? Now again, with uni and with everything going on, it's quite hard to find the time, so I haven't played video games in quite a number of months now, unfortunately. Uh, I definitely used to, I was a big fan of the Total War games, so the first one I played of those was Rome 1, um, back in the day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I played Rome 1 and then Medieval 2, I played Shogun when it came out, I was a big fan of Empire, because I found that time period very interesting, um, despite everyone hating on Empire, but I think with a couple of mods that's quite a fun game. Um, so I played all those games, I uh, played quite a lot of Civilization 5 when it was out, um, I also did, uh, what else did I play, I played like Heroes and Generals for a little bit when that was out, it was like a, an online thing, um, World of Tanks I played for a little bit of time as well, my brother was very into that, he was in the whole clan thing and you know looking up where the most armor piercing damage and all of that you know I just thought it was fun to roll out in a Soviet tank and do some shooting but um and see so yeah, those kind of things I played I have got I think it's EU4 but I've never played because I just I just don't have the time that's that's the issue uh, I really enjoyed Skyrim as well actually I played a lot of Skyrim uh, back in the day as well I mean th those were the kind of games that I enjoyed um, and if I find enough free time maybe over the summer I might you know whack up a video of me playing one of these if people are interested at least uh, put a face cam thing like they have like a little camera up there and they kind of they kind of look don't they to, but um, yeah that's that's kind of essentially what I used to play um, but I don't really have time anymore uh, probably will again when I when I get some time, but yeah, those are the kind of things that I played. I quite enjoyed uh, that kind of thing. Uh, also, Age of Empires actually that was the first video game I ever played. Um, also, one of the reasons I got into history was because of video games that plays them some of them and then uh, look up, for example, on Age of Empires the Britons or something. I to then go and look up the Britons and find out more about them and things. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed Age of Empires. Age of Empires 2, uh, Rise of Kings, I think it's called. Uh, it's the first video game I played and yeah, I was hooked from then, so I really enjoyed that. 
All right, so pineapple on pizza. I do actually love pineapple on pizza. Like I love a Hawaiian pizza. So yeah, definitely. Favorite Dutch food? Um, ooh, that's tricky. I love a croquette. Like croquette and oh great, especially a saute croquette as well. Um, also just Dutch like fries. Oh, they're very different to English fries. Like English fries are like, like kind of thick. Um, but not with two C's, like they're just kind of thick, a bit soggy, you know, people eat them with like, like it's vinegar and um, salt up here and then in the north as well, it's curry sauce, which is actually, it's quite nice. But like you don't have the, you know, like the flam sofrita, like the Flemish flies, like the Flemish fries, <laughs> the Flemish fries, which are like these like the long ones from the Netherlands and with like mayo, patakje oorlog, mm, like, I do enjoy that, just like that kind of thing. You kind of miss it a lot. Uh, also stuff like stompelt uh, and like uh, snert erte soup, like stuff like that, definitely. So whenever we go to the Netherlands, like my family, we just have like a car full of, like everyone thinks we have a car full of weed, but we have a car full of like food just to come and eat. It's like immigrant problems right there. But yeah, I'd say those are like my favorite, like uh, also Dutch, like bannekoeken um, with the strope, like schenk strope, like, oh, so good. But yeah, those are, I'd say those were my favorite kind of Dutch foods uh, right there. So, um, okay, so this next one I've kind of already answered. How do I research and what books do I read? Um, well, a lot of the research is by reading books. Um, also sometimes by like watching documentaries and things, but with documentary you have to be quite careful because they often very much oversimplify the picture. And um, I can completely understand why, because you can't go into everything and make everything nuanced because you have to make bring it across in a way that people who aren't particularly interested will understand because that's what you're trying to do with a documentary. Um, but yeah, it does mean you have to be careful with uh, documentaries. Um, also with which books I read and which ones I would recommend. Um, I'm currently working on a website and I do actually have um, a page where I'm going to have sort of sources and things that you can read uh, and stuff that I would recommend, especially on the stuff I talk about more often. So the Viking Age, I'll have like a load of books. Um, also because I'm reading about three or four books a week now at uni, uh, I can say which ones I thought would be particularly interesting for various people uh, to read and which would be good for an introduction, that kind of thing. So I think I'll definitely go ahead with that because uh, it's something interesting. Okay, so what music do you listen to? Well, it's I listen to a lot of different music. Um, Quite a lot of historical stuff as well, I'd say. So uh, when I'm in the gym, I, I quite like a bit of heavy metal, so stuff like Amon Amoth, um, Baldur's Drauma, like the metal uh, tunes, as well as like quite a lot of rap. So uh, Eminem's quite good for in the gym. Uh, stuff like the Army of the Pharaohs, I quite like uh, that kind of thing. Uh, also some like Eastern European stuff, which is in in Polish. Uh, yeah, I quite like and in, in Russian stuff like that. That's good for in the gym. Um, I also quite like reggae quite a lot of the time. I've actually got a poster of Bob Marley. You can probably see in the corner there. Um, also big inspiration. Um, then as well, I quite like a lot of like folk music. So I used to play in a Cayley band up here. So I quite like a lot of folk music in Scots. I quite like some stuff that's in uh, Gaelic or in Irish. Um, also stuff that's obviously Frisian music. So a lot of Baldur's Drauma is more kind of uh, mellow stuff, like acoustic kind of things. Um, and yeah, I, give, I even listen to some like modern pop music from time to time. Um, I, I listen to a lot of, of different kind of tunes, I guess, Sabaton as well. Um, also for in the gym, it's good, like historical stuff, I guess. But yeah, there's a, there's a big range of, of what I listen to. Okay, so leading on from that, what's my favorite Sabaton song? <sighs> it's a difficult question. I'd say it's probably When the Winged Hussars Arrive. I just think they do like a great job of like the, um, the kind of anticipation, kind of the building of the tension uh, to, with the whole siege. Like you can really envision what's happening there. And then like when the Winged Hussars arrive and they charge down the mountain and stuff, it just, you know, I was about to say it brings it all back, but I clearly wasn't there, but it kind of really helped bring it like the, the whole, you know, how it was. Um, but then I also quite like The Soldier of Three Armies. I think that's a really cool song um, at the same time there. All right, so what's my political or religious alignment? Um, I'm not really going to go into this. I don't think it's particularly important. I guess if you want to know more about me, it would be, but for like, the kind of videos I make, it's not particularly important. I'm not extreme on any side. I'm not really extreme on the right or the left. Um, I guess I'm probably more of a centrist because I kind of subscribe to some things from the left, um, or traditionally the left, and kind of other things from, from the right a bit more, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't think it's particularly important. With my like religious stuff, I think I'm quite like... It's kind of your own thing, to be honest. It's sort of the Ron Swanson answer, I guess, is the closest to my answer, I'd say. Uh, and the final question was Yorkist or Lancastrian. Um, 
well, I have to say, what rules, what rules. Um, my brother is at the University of York and I absolutely love the city of York. Actually, my first date was in York, fun fact, uh, and obviously the York Viking festivals in York. So I just have a big connection to York, to be honest. Um, and also I kind of, you read the history of the Walls of the Roses and kind of the Yorkists just came out to me as the good guys. And this was because I was a bit younger when I was reading, so obviously I wasn't thinking objectively, historically. Um, but they just kind of have this cool story, you know, with um, King Edward and how he's like 17 and then he goes off and like yeets the Lancastrians in battle and he's like just tears through them and all that kind of thing. So I'd, I'd say, yeah, the Yorkists probably. Although I'm not I'm not a massive Ricardian though, I, I still think like Richard III probably did get a bit of bad press, but I still think he was a bit of, you know, he was not he was a bit of a bad apple, like in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'd say I'm more of a Yorkist than a Lancastrian there. But I do like Henry VII a lot, like, I think. But then I, I describe him as a Tudor rather than a Lancastrian, because, yeah, he was a Lancastrian, but, like, you know, like, vis a vis, thanks to his mum in that way, I guess. And, like, there were a lot of Yorkists fighting on his side already at Bosworth. Like, I think it, it's pretty much already... It's in a, definitely a separate stage of the Wars of the Roses by that point. So, yeah, that, that's what I would say for that. So, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been my face reveal... Thank you for the awesome effort for 100,000 subscribers. It's really incredible. I have no idea how we got there, um, but we did. And we're already passing over on like 124,000 subscribers. Um, so we'll probably hit 200,000 subscribers at some point next year, uh, which is really awesome. And then we'll go for the quarter of a million, I think. Um, I'm going to try and keep uploading, definitely, even if it's a bit less at some points, obviously because of busy and other constraints and things like that. Definitely going to keep it up. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Hilbert from History with Hilbert, uh, and I'll see you all very soon. So have a good one.